Okay, so on to the lead breaks, which of course are a little bit more involved. Uh, Jimmy plays four really killer licks, right? And each one's got a kind of different vibe going for it, which is really cool. Um, we'll talk about these in detail, uh, but also with the tab on the screen, of course. Uh, and we particularly want to talk about the third riff, okay? The third lead break that he takes. Uh, but I digress. We'll get there when we get there. So the first lead break, this is all in D. It's basically a D blues, like I said before. Uh, we are on the third string, one, two, three, on the twelfth fret. And this is a full step bend. Then barring across the first two strings, uh, at the tenth fret, we're playing low to high. Chuck Berry riff and probably goes back before then. All right, then we come back to the 12th fret on the third string, bend it, release it, and pull off to the 10th fret. And as I was mentioning in the riff section, make sure you got that finger in line and ready to go. It's got to be rested there so that when you pull off with the ring finger, you get a nice solid pull off. Then it's the 12th fret on the fourth string, back to 12 on the third string, ten on the third string, twelve on the fourth string again, then staying with the fourth string it's twelve, ten, twelve. Then bar across the second string and the third string, the B string and the D string, or excuse me, the B string and the G string. And we're going from 12 to 10, hitting both strings, and then sort of sliding off. Moving on to lead break number two, uh, I, I want to say something about these lead breaks for just one second. On the recording of Moby Dick on Led Zeppelin II, all of these lead breaks are doubled. He's recorded uh, each break twice. So it's two guitars playing uh, these licks simultaneously. And of course, they are not perfectly in unison with each other. I'm guessing that that's exactly what he was going for. It just creates a certain sound, you know? So uh, the second lick has always been really interesting to me because I've watched footage of him playing this live. Uh, but on the recording, it almost sounds a little bit like one of the guitars is going. So he's getting like a bit of a harmony going or whatever. But again, I'm going to choose to play it uh, more or less the way he played it live. So we are on the second string and we're on the 13th fret and this is a full step bend. Uh, I do it using my third finger, my ring finger, and then catching the string underneath with my pinky. But you could also do it with the two middle fingers. It's your choice. Whatever works for you is best. So we're doing a full step bend. And we're reaching the uh, 13th fret on the bottom string. And then we're bending a full step again on the first string at the 13th fret and we're doing a reverse rake or sweep if you prefer 10 10 12 10 10 12 with one sweep of the pick upward motion so that whole riff is all right now we're moving on to the third riff um, which is a riff of much debate. <laughs> but it's really not that complicated. I, I think the thing that um, has tricked a lot of people, including me many, many years ago, is you're wanting to keep it in key. And Jimmy doesn't keep it in key. Uh, you'll see the riff played like this. Sometimes even. Uh, both of which sound really great, uh, but I think you'll find that if you uh, take it and slow it down using some software like Riff Station, or I'm sure there's numerous other ones out there, and you slow it down, you'll hear that he's blatantly going out of key, which sounds really cool. It's dissonant, it's edgy, and it sounds really great. He's actually pulling off 
I'm on the first string right now, third fret, first fret open, right? One stroke of the pick. And he does that right across the strings using the exact same frets. Yes, it does uh, jump out of scale, but that's Jimmy and it sounds great. That is actually what he plays. Uh, so he plays it across the first four strings, one, two, three, four. Then he repeats it, adding the fifth string in there and kind of pushing the groove a little bit. He's really kind of firing it up right there and speeding up slightly, which also sounds really cool. Okay. And then the fourth riff is actually one of my favorite ones. It's uh, almost like a Scotty Moore or an old rockabilly riff uh, or lick. Um, you can find it in the uh, beginning of the Black Dog solo uh, and probably some other places. So we are on the uh, fifth string on the fifth fret. And I use my pinky for this. You slide from eight to nine. Then on the fourth string, we play the seventh fret to the ninth fret. Seventh fret on the third string, back to nine on the fourth string, and back to seven on the third string. So the first slice or the first piece of that riff goes. Let me move the camera slightly here so you can see the right paw. <laughs> Alternate picking is really vital to pulling this lick off because it's pretty quick. Okay, so after the little slice that we did, you move to the 10th fret on the G string, the third string, and you're doing a half step slide. And then we move from the 10th fret to the 12th fret on the B string and the 10th fret on the 1st string, the E string. And then the last riff is on the 13th fret on the B string, full step bend with a vicious vibrato, okay? Alright, so there you go with the fabulous lead breaks from uh, Jimmy Page, one of my all-time favorite guitar players for Moby Dick. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and uh, please take a minute to subscribe if you'd like, and we'll see you soon.